Brother lads, welcome back to Kwasi Sasno Podcast. My name is Kwasi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around Arsenal. West Ham are in trouble. Arsenal and Manchester City are both not willing to pay up to 100 million for Declan Rice. West Ham were thinking that uh, the arrival of Manchester City will skyrocket the price um, into astronomical figures that is not happening manchester city are still very reluctant to sign the clan rise for 100 million pounds gonna be diving into that story a lot of information a lot of reports happening since last night on this deal uh, michael has told him personally you're going to be my future captain and i want to build my future project around you declan rice we're gonna be diving into much of that arsenal looking at alternatives and nicola barella is one of the players that we are um we have on our list as all uh, an alternative to you know declan rice we'll be talking about barella being an alternative to rice just doesn't make any sense in my la in, in my world and then kai havers will be putting on shot number 29 at Arsenal. Hit the like button. Let's get this one to 500 likes uh, and let me know in the comment box below if Arsenal were to turn to alternatives. Of course, there is Moises Caicedo, there is Nicola Barella, uh, there is, uh, I think, Sandro Tonali is gone now. I've already talked about uh, Sandro Tonali. Which player do you think is the best alternative to the profile of Declan Rice? Now, of, of, of course, at times we are, thought, um, we, we are told that there is no other player like Declan Rice. That is absolutely not true. I think he's one of the best in the world in his position, but there's so many other players Arsenal could sign um, instead. So in the comment box below, let's suggest some of the alternatives that Arsenal should sign if the Declan Rice deal actually does not go through right so let's start with um jacob steinbach and the guardian reporting that kai havers has personally requested for shirt number 29 at arsenal and that is what he's going to be putting on next campaign now he's been putting on 29 at chelsea 29 at balevacuzin as well um and i think who's wearing 29 at arsenal i do remember chamak chamak did put on shirt number 29 and i don't know if that was a success story or it was some kind of horror show but i don't remember chamak being one of the successful signings at arsenal i think unless and Wenger, we signed so many players so many strikers especially from the french league one that actually didn't work out we had so many players um at that number nine role that didn't work out chamak was one of them yaya sanogo was the other olivia juro is um i think I mean, I mean, let me know in the comment box below. Do you think Olivier Giroud was a success at Arsenal? I think he was a success, definitely, at Chelsea. He was a success at AC Milan. And having won the, won the World Cup, you cannot actually say he's not a successful player who has had a successful career. But at Arsenal, do we consider him a success or a failure? I'm not really sure about that. But Kai Havers, shot number 29, just as you know, Maroon Chamak, that is what is going to be put on next campaign. It's not a fancy shot, in my opinion. I, like, it's not one of the shots that I would be excited to see my player get shot number 29. And I think if Emil Smith Rowe's situation does not get any better, I'm of the view that in the future, Kai Havers could pick up the shot number 10 at Arsenal if Emil Smith Rowe eventually leaves. But that d entirely depends on um, Emil Smith Rowe's progress and Emil, Emil Smith Rowe's success, you know, at Arsenal. If he has a very good season next campaign and probably two other very good seasons, I I easily see him be at Arsenal for a very long time. But if he if he doesn't pick up from where he actually stopped last campaign, but one. I look at him as a new Jack Wilshire, very talented, really loved at Arsenal, but then you, you, you eventually live without, uh, you know, getting the success that everyone thought you would actually get. So, 29 for Kai Havers, medicals tomorrow um, and on Sunday. Uh, I think the first, first part of the medicals will be done on, on, on Saturday, second part will be done on Sunday, and then it will be announced early next week, according to the Guardian's jacob steinberg right so let's dive into the saga of declan rice because this one uh is absolutely crazy i've done stories and stories about uh declan rice and i can tell you that we are nowhere no, nowhere near at the end at the moment right so fabrizio romano this moment has said that um uh, one crucial point on this story is that Mikel Arteta is pushing at the best level to sign Declan Rice. Arteta is trying in every single way possible since yesterday. Of course, it doesn't depend on him. It depends on the owners and how much they want to spend on the deal. But Mikel is trying his best. He's really pushing for Declan Rice to join Arsenal. If Declan Rice will be an Arsenal player, trust me, 
Ateta will be a very, very crucial factor. As per Fabrizio Romano, there on his YouTube channel, and of course, as quoted by the Arsenal Insider. Now, um, let's dive into some of the events that have happened ever since we reported that Manchester City and Arsenal were ready to rival each other on the table for Declan Rice. Number one, um, uh, it was reported yesterday by Sky Sports late in the night that, uh, and, and this was well, this was coming in from Sky Italia. Um, uh, Gianluca Di Marzio was reporting on behalf of Sky Italia, and he said Manchester City were in the driving seat to sign Declan Rice, and a deal between them and West Ham was viewed to be very very close that was yesterday in the night uh, sky also went on to say that declan rice has already agreed to join arsenal sorry to, yeah to join arsenal but he's also open to joining manchester city as per yesterday in the night that is the information that sky put out um uh, yesterday in the night as reported by Gianluca di marzio and i think they were they were pretty much spot on because they wanted to break the story first they wanted to get the story first that uh, rice has gone to uh, manchester city however they were disappointed and the disappointment is uh manchester city are still very reluctant to meet the 100 million mark for Declan Rice. Now they like him, they appreciate him after Ike Gundogan, you know, signing for Barcelona. They look at him as a potential replacement for their, you know, captain. Of course, he's got that, uh, you know, leadership profile as well. So they look at him as the new captain probably in the next maybe five years, all right? But at the moment, they are very reluctant to meet that 100 million mark. And this is very, very big danger for West Ham. Listen. If Arsenal went in with 90 million and Manchester City's offer offer has matched the 90 million and M Manchester City have told you we might actually work around the structure of the deal but we are n th there is no world where we give you 100 million I think West Ham are, are in real big trouble right right now they are going to have to sell to either one of us but for a price they actually do not want because if Arsenal dare threaten to walk away or if Manchester City dare threaten to walk away uh, from this deal, West Ham will have to sell to one party, one club um, at a fee that they do not even want. And I actually think um, Arsenal have, have actually been kind of genius uh, in this deal. Yes, we should have paid the money a long time ago. Yes, we should have agreed the deal a long time ago because this is now month number six that Arsenal are trying to negotiate one deal for one player. It's kind of embarrassing. But why I think we've also done a genius on the deal is we have set the bar too high for all the other clubs. I think Manchester City, with all the scrutiny that, that they are under, with all the um, uh, you know, eyes in FIFA, UEFA, and the Premier League watching them, they will want to make more profits from uh, from the day it was announced that they had some financial fair play ble you know breaches than um, than spend more money so if they signed Josko Givario that is around 80 million and they sign um and they sign Kovacic for 30 i'm of the view that they might want to spend at least another 70 or less than 70 million on a third player the fact that they are losing Gundogan and Bernardo Silva means that they will they will need two midfielders to come in, and I do understand. And I think they will make a lot of money this summer. Uh, Gundogan moves for free, but Bernardo Silva and Riyad Mahrez, that is a combined 100 million. But if they if City, who, who West Ham thought they are gonna come in, they are big spenders. They are no nonsense guys. They're gonna come in and spend a lot of money, um, up to 100 on rice. If City have gone. We do not see the value of a 100 million player here in Declan Rice. We're sorry, but we just don't see the value. I think West Ham are now going to start, you know, panicking. They're really, really going to start panicking. So, according, to th th this actually washes away the reports from fa from Sky Sports that um, uh, City were leading the rest. Because if you don't want to pay more money than Arsenal, if your structure is not that beautiful as well, because I don't think City are going to pay this money in, in two years. It's crazy money, especially now, like, like I said, uh, they have a lot of, you know, scrutiny that they are, you know, th they have a lot of eyes looking at them. I think West Ham might be in trouble. They might lose rise for even less than 90. Because I'm telling you this, if Arsenal remain alone in this race, we will side him for 80 million. 
we will sign Declan Rice for 80 million. But let's look at other um, developments that have been happening in the uh, in the deal. Uh, of course, I've told you about Mikel Arteta. There is there is also talk of Mikel Arteta talking to the players today, according to Sami Makbo, and he has told them and reassured them that he's going to be the pillar the focal point of Arsenal's rebuild. Not the focal point of our midfield only, but the focal point of this project. And I think Saka is a very great headline grabber. But I think we need a headline grabber. I don't know if it makes sense. Look, you look at Jude Bellingham. Bellingham is a headline grabber. Um, you look at Salah at Liverpool. Salah is a headline grabber. Salah was not the most... Uh, I really I cannot say it was not the most important, but there were so many important players, Trent, um, Robertson in that Liverpool's in, in that successful Liverpool side. But Salah was a headline grabber. Um and I think that Clan Rice is such a headline grabber. Whenever asked you, you know that huge midfielder that you know when he scores that screamer, when when he makes that late run in the box and you know has that tap in, I think when as, as Arsenal grow into a successful project and, you know, group of people, group of players, Rice will be such a valuable asset. And I tell you what, I see Rice going to Madrid. Like, if he signs for Arsenal in 2023 and he, he's there for four years, I can see him going to Madrid. And just imagine Arsenal making that sell. Because Arsenal, what, what is our record sell? What is our record sell? Um, is it around 50 million or 60? Uh, around there. Just imagine Arsenal making that record sell of 150 million um, in Declan Rice to, to, to Real Madrid. That would massively change things at the Emirates Stadium. So um, at the moment, at the moment, Mikel Arteta is trying to talk to him. He has called him and told him, you're going to be my future captain and you're going to be the focal point of this you know, rebuild of this project. So let's see how much of that is actually going to work. But Fabrizio says at the moment, Mikel Arteta um, is pushing with the Cronkies, is pushing with the board um, and trying to get the deal done, but still depends on how much Arsenal are willing to spend on the deal. And um, I was I was watching Damesh Chef on Haters TV and he made a very interesting point. And he says clubs always have limits. Clubs always have uh, boundaries and scopes in which they are operating. Arsenal does do not have one target um, in Declan Rice. They have Timber. They have Kai Havertz, who's done. They have um, uh, they have they, they have they, they have other targets in Romeo Lavia as well, uh, and probably a striker if Arsenal, you know, ha do have some spare cash to spend. So, because you have such a huge number of players that you want to bring in, and you can't spend in excess of four hundred million, three hundred million, you you need to work within the parameters that you've actually said. And that's what Arsenal are trying to do here with the Declan Rice. They, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to go, if we can sign him for 90, that extra 10 million can then go uh, on the Julian Timber deal. That extra 10 million can then go uh, on the Romeo Lavia deal. So it's sensible what we're doing, although it does not satisfy the ambitions of a huge club like Real Madrid. Like, uh, if you want to go back to the levels of competing with Barca and playing Bayern Munich every single season, we need to start acting like a big club. Okay, so uh, the other development that we had since last night was that Arsenal uh, had started st had started looking at alternatives uh, for Declan Rice. Now, I don't th really think has Arsenal have started looking at alternatives. I think we have a short list where Rice is on top. Probably the names like maybe Tonali, maybe Barella. I'm not really sure. I've seen Barella. Right, I've seen Barella, and I was excited. But look, it, this could be my own bias, but I don't understand a world where UEFA Champions League winner Nicola Barella is a backup to UEFA Conference League winner Declan Rice on a shortlist. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But uh, look, we know the profile of people and players that Mikel Arteta is signing. I mean, there is this trend of Mikel Arteta wanting players that uh, have committed relationships. You look at all, you, you almost look at all this, you know, Arsenal team. No one is jumping around. Ramsdale is a married guy. Gabriel Magalhães is married. Alexander Zichenko is married. Um, um, uh, Benjamin White. I think Ben, I, I don't know if Ben is married, but I've seen he is in a committed relationship. Xhaka is married. 
Pat is not married, of course. Odegaard, is he married? Is Odegaard married? I I've seen his partner, but I'm, he's not married. So you look at the responsibility, the level of responsibility that, um, you know, such, you know, profile of people that we're signing have, and you also look at the leadership skills that they have. Julian Timber captained Ajax at 21. Odegaard has captained, uh, you know, Arsenal and the Norwegian side. Uh, before he joined, joined Arsenal, he was Norway captain. Um, you, you, you think about... Um, uh, the leadership skills of Aaron Ramsden and you look at him, he's such a leader. You look at Xhaka, you look at Partey, uh, you look at all these players. You, you know, we, it, it, we are clearly signing a profile of responsible leaders. That is the profile and trust me, Declan Rice really fits into that because one of the reasons that's why he doesn't want to leave in the, the London is he has a young family, a young born, that he would love to secure a future for with the best schools in London. Responsible. Responsibility, again. So, um, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. But, uh, you know, Barella being a, 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 on the short list gives me goosebumps, right? It means, one, that we get to keep Thomas Partey. It means, number two, that we get to get one of the best midfielders in Italy. That is Barella. I mean, I, I've seen people say Tonali is the future of Italian football. Tonali is the best mi midfielder in Italy. Just cut the crap. Barella is the best midfielder, is among the top five best midfielders in, cent on, in, in central midfield in, the, in, in Europe. It's, it's as simple as that. Pedri, Barella, Kevin De Bruyne, Gundogan, and Odegaard. You know, very close to that. Anyway, uh, but look, the, the point I'm trying to put here is that if Arsenal are, are to walk away from Declan Rice and they go for Nicola Barella, that is going to be a very, very good shot, right? That would be a very good shot. But until the deal is off, I'm not discussing alternatives. I'm not. See you right in the next one.